We know you've heard of Venus flytraps, the most famous of all carnivorous plants. We've seen them in cartoons and learned about them in school, but there are many more like them out in the world and different types with different mechanisms of trapping their prey. However, it takes a very long time for them to digest their food. It would take them weeks to just digest, just the tip of a human finger. If we are alive, when they chomp down on our finger, by the time they start to break the finger down, we would have already healed. So their choice of prey is usually insects because they are easier to digest and preferably dead once so they can heal themselves. Today, we're going to look at 10 plants that eat animals. But first, why do they eat animals? Well, carnivorous plants derive their energy from photosynthesis, but get their nutrition from animals and insects. They tend to grow in areas with poor soil quality, so we could forgive them for turning carnivorous due to the lack of nutrition from soil. Despite how little we learned of them, there are actually around 600 species of these plants, and it keeps increasing by three species every year. Number 10, a tropical pitcher plant, also called the monkey cup, because the pitchers are used as drinking cups by monkeys. No, don't worry, they're too big to be eaten by the pitcher plant. This plant is fairly common too, but not as common as Venus flytraps. There are more than 100 species of pitcher plants around the world. The main thing that distinguishes this plant from other carnivorous plants its size. The pitchers of this plant can reach over a foot in height, making it ideal for capturing and digesting insects. Lizards and amphibians animals are attracted to the sweet scent of nectar, and once they fall into the pitcher, digesting them can take up to two months. For most species, dissolved insects provide them with the nitrogen they need, but some other species get creative. One species of pitcher plant, the Nymphens impolaria, catches falling leaves, which produces nitrogen as it decomposes. I guess technically that doesn't make these specific plants carnivorous. They are nevertheless in the pitcher plant family. Number 9. Cobra Lily It's a pretty name for a very devious and cruel plant. An even more beautiful name is Darlingtonia californica, which is the scientific name for the cobra lily. Again, may we add dangerous plant. The cobra lily is named that way because it looks like a cobra snake is about to strike. It is a rare plant native to cold water bogs in Oregon and Northern California. It is a sweet scent to lure in animals, but that's not why we call it cruel. The insides of this plant have numerous see-through false exits that exhaust its desperate and terrified victims as they try to escape like a house of mirrors. But if the house was eating you, I'm just glad humans aren't one of their preys. Oddly, scientists haven't found the natural pollinators of this plant. Surely some insect must gather its pollen or it wouldn't exist. Number 8. The Portuguese Sundew For such dangerous plants, they sure have really pretty names. The Portuguese sundew grows in nutrient-poor soil along the coast of Spain, Portugal, and Morocco, which is the reason it feeds on insects. Like most other carnivorous plants, it attracts bugs with its sweet aroma and traps them with a sticky substance called mucilage on its leaves. The more they struggle, the more ensnared they become and ultimately die from suffocation or exhaustion. The plant will then secrete enzymes, which dissolve the insects and release the nutrients, which are then absorbed by the plant. Number 7. The Australian Sundew Plants Are not generally known for their quick movements, but the Australian Sundew wastes no time in snapping up any unfortunate prey that happens to wander about. This plant sets a different trap from most other plants. See the raindrops on the leaves? Well, that's not water. It's a sticky, glue-like substance that traps insects that believe it's water. The insects trigger the touch-sensitive tentacles and get catapulted right into the plant's digestive mouth. The tentacles then move the prey down to the leaf trap, and enzymes digest the insect into nutrients. For the plant, this is nothing. As you keep going, these plants get more dangerous and number one will shock you. Number 6. Orichala These plants are native to South Africa, and they come with a little twist. They don't digest the insects they trap with its sticky hairs. Instead, it outsources the job to a bug species called Hemeridiorotoli, or informally known as assassin bugs with which it has a symbiotic relationship. These bugs don't get stuck to the leaves of the rotula plants because they are covered with a thick, greasy layer. When other insects get trapped by the plant, the assassin bugs swarm to the prey, stab it, then suck out its insides. Pretty gruesome, but that's not the squeamish part. In return for trapping the insect of the assassin bug, the plant gets the excreted waste of the bug, which is especially rich in nutrients that the plant absorbs. That's nice, I guess. Number five. Water wheel plant? You could say this is the aquatic version of the Venus flytrap. They share a common ancestor 
A carnivorous plant that lived way back in the beginning of the Cenozoic era. Its trap is arranged in whorls around a free-floating stem, hence the name, and this is one of the carnivorous plants capable of lightning-fast movement. When it has locked on its prey, the traps of the plant shut in as little as one hundredth of a second. It has no roots and floats on the surface of lakes, enticing insects with its small traps. Each trap is surrounded by four and six six to eight millimeter long bristles, which prevent triggering of traps by the debris in the water. This species is also something of a global citizen. It is one of the largest and most disconnected distributions of any flowering species and grows in more than 40 countries across four continents from the cold subarctic region of North Russia to the warmer southern coast of Australia. Despite this, the water wheel plant is an endangered species declining over the last century and grows only in shallow and acidic waters of nutrient-poor swamps. Number 4. Big Floating Bladderworth Well, I guess we're done with the pretty names. The Big Floating Bladderworth is also an aquatic carnivorous plant. It is native to the coastal plains of the United States. They eat snails, slugs, and small fish. It's quite a nuisance, actually, because these plants are mat-forming. That is, they have creeping stems that grow in a trail and spread out to produce a mat-like cover. It's also quite problematic as this is an invasive species. Studies done in the Adirondack Mountains of New York showed that the presence of these species caused major changes in nutrient cycling, sediment chemistry, and overall productivity of the area. But it seems we have found a use for them. Their leaves here is, when dried, serve as medicinal tea, which help treat kidney stones, spasms fluid retention, and aid in weight loss. It is sometimes also applied to the skin directly for burns and swelling. Number 3. The Corkscrew Plant If you saw this plant out in the wild, you wouldn't understand why it's called a corkscrew plant or why it's considered carnivorous. It has small, non-carnivorous leaves on the soil surface to help with photosynthesis. But it has corkscrew roots. These roots are long, pale, and resemble tree roots and trap microorganisms found in soil. The roots have a groove that allow organisms to travel up the route. But it's a one-way travel because very tiny hairs make sure that the organism travels only upwards once it reaches the base of the plant. The prey has no choice but to enter the chamber where it is slowly digested. There are about 30 species of the corkscrew plant, and they grow in wet terrestrial and semi-aquatic environments in Africa and Central and South America. Number 2. The Venus Flytrap We can't talk about carnivorous plants and not include this little guy. Yep, little. Contrary to what you might have seen in cartoons and movies, Venus flytraps are actually quite small. They're half a foot in length, and the sticky eyelid traps which look really long, are only about an inch long. They are creepier than you expect. Actually, if ever you magically turn into a fly and get caught in the trap, remember not to panic. If you stay very still, the trap will open the next morning and you can fly out. Fighting your way out will only quicken the digestion process because the more you struggle, the more it tells the plant how vigorously to kill you. If you're trapped, the plant will take a few days to digest you. In a week later, the trap is laid for another insect. Here's something you probably didn't know. Because Venus fly traps take a very long time to digest their food, they can't risk closing their traps for debris to cut down on false alarms. This plant will snap shut only if an insect touches two different interior hairs in the course of 20 seconds. Another thing you probably didn't know is that each time the trap shuts, its lifespan gets shorter. When you are told not to touch a Venus fly trap, it's not for your safety because you will be completely unharmed. But the plant can only take about 10 false alarms before it dies. So next time you see one, resist the urge to poke your finger into it and just keep walking. Number 1. Nepenthes Raja Nepenthes Raja is the largest of the pitcher plants, and it's also the largest carnivorous plant in the world. Raja in Hindi means king, and this plant is often referred to as king of the pitcher plants. The plant is essentially a trap filled with up to 3.5 liters of water and 2.5 liters of digestive fluid. When insects fall in, they are unable to escape and are almost instantly digested by the plant. But that's not why the Naphthys Raja is in the number one spot. While insects, particularly ants, are staple for this plant, the larger ones catch bigger prey. On many occasions, people have found rats half-digested inside the pitchers and even birds, lizards, and frogs. In addition to that, the Nepenthes Raja has an interesting relationship with tree shrews. Over the years, They've evolved to entice these squirrel-like insectivorous tree dwellers. Their shape and size force the shrews to defecate directly into the plant's cups, providing them with the nitrogen they need. 
This also helps shrews who prefer to mark their feeding territory. Okay, now I have two reasons not to go anywhere near them. Many of these plants are kept by hobbyists. Are you planning to keep any of these plants at home? It's a good way to get rid of bugs. Let us know in the comments below. Well, that's it for the top 10 plants that eat animals. Thank you for watching and we'll be back with another countdown video soon. Until then, goodbye.